Welcome to the Spirit Sisters podcast. My name is Karina Machado and I'm the author of Spirit Sisters, Women's True Stories of the Paranormal. In this podcast, I'll revisit the women behind my most unforgettable stories and unearth new tales to chill, intrigue, astound and offer hope. You'll hear first-hand accounts of sacred journeys, spirit encounters, near-death experiences, angels, mysteries, marvels, and love more powerful than death. Whatever you believe about the afterlife, I invite you to open your minds and hearts as ordinary people reveal their extraordinary encounters. I acknowledge the Darawal people, who are the traditional custodians of the land of Sutherland Shire in Australia, where I live and record Spirit Sisters, and I recognise their continuing connection to lands, waters and community. I pay respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to Elders past, present and emerging. You're listening to Spirit Sisters. I'm your host, Karina Machado. I'm so happy to have your company today. A lot has happened since I last published an episode around five months ago. In the interim, so much has shifted and creatively that transformation is ongoing. As some of you may know, I had a life-changing experience in June and early July of this year. I walked the Camino de Santiago, El Camino, the Way of St. James, an ancient pilgrimage across Spain. On July 4, a full moon morning, I arrived at the cathedral in Santiago de Compostela, the capital of the beautiful mist-shrouded Galicia region, which, as you're about to hear, absolutely stole my heart. With her rich heritage of Celtic legends, lore and music, Galicia reunited me with a part of myself I hadn't known was missing. For me, walking the Camino changed everything. It literally took me in a new direction. And I'm hardly the only one who'd say that, given the proliferation of books about this journey in films, one of the most famous being The Way, starring Martin Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Now, as I integrate this walk, my focus is on writing my first novel, partly inspired by my ancestors' stories and partly inspired by the Camino and the manifold ways it enriched my soul and my soul's calling. While the podcast is essentially on hold while I do this, I aim to return from time to time to share reflections here and some conversations. And so this episode is different to usual programming. What follows is my reflection on the pilgrimage. Specifically, five sacred truths the Camino revealed to me. The path winds and I follow, friends. I hope this serves. Enjoy. It's been almost three months since I walked into Santiago de Compostela in Spain at the end of my 800 kilometre pilgrimage along the Way of St James. I walked in, I daggy danced in, I strolled in holding hands with my soul sister Sarah. All of these things I did. What I didn't do? Shed a tear, although many were shed along the way, it is true. But in this moment of journey's end that felt like a beginning, I didn't cry. I'm not sure why. Perhaps I stood back, let my spirit soar up into those vast Galician skies, the same skies my great-grandmother once gazed upon, and simply allowed it all to be, without the burden of my human emotions. Let the path unfold, pilgrim, without expectations, she whispered. For me, the voice of the Camino is feminine. She has a nurturing energy that loves with a mother's tough love, if called for. And it was called for more than once. No mother wants to see her child misstepping or being unkind to herself. She'll course correct you, you can be sure. Allow and accept. Accept yourself. These were key messages of the Camino. There's a saying that the Camino begins when you get home. So I know that I'll be integrating this pilgrimage for the rest of my earthly days and beyond. And so it's impossible to distill the essence of this momentous path into one sharing here on my podcast. But I wanted to begin somewhere to ignite a conversation because I believe the Camino offers us all so much, even if you don't ever physically take a step upon it. 
I'd love to hear what you think of all of this. I welcome your thoughts and questions. So I'm here today to reflect on some lessons that I received, although I prefer to call them illuminations. I'm sharing these in the spirit that they may offer something for you too, for aren't we all pilgrims on the road? Hopefully we'll wish each other buen camino as we cross paths, as pilgrims traditionally do on the Camino. It means have a good journey, good way. How was it that Ram Das so lovingly put it? We're all just walking each other home? I love that. And love is the beating heart of the beautiful Camino. Across the paradise of the Pyrenees, through verdant vineyards and gentle plains of rippling wheat, through fairy tale forests and sleeping beauty villages, beneath lolly coloured sunrises and storm clouds bruising the horizon, there was a keynote. And this keynote was love. There's a saying that every Camino contains a love story. And this too was my experience. I'll share more about that towards the end of this reflection. First up, here are my top five illuminations gleaned from my experience walking the way of St. James. Starting with number five, be where your feet are. Drawn as I have always been to the mystical path, to matters of the soul, even before I could have put that language to it. I've had a tendency to float up, up and away, out of my body and out of the present moment. It seemed kinder up there, less shouty. I spent many years in this state, kind of disembodied, disconnected, immersed in my heart space of writing, reflecting, reading, dreaming. There's nothing wrong with that, in fact everything right probably, Yet, all must be in balance. I was out of balance. I don't believe we have incarnated only to drift like untethered balloons, unwittingly floating further and further away from ourselves and our earthly purpose the more we try to connect with the truth of who we are. If we're untethered, we are missing the point of the exercise. I believe our discarnate guides and ancestors know this, and they'll never stop trying to remind us to love our physical experience. Healing and connection come easier when your hands are in the soil, your feet on the ground. I've been learning this for a while. The Camino brought it home to me really powerfully. The Camino is grounding. Every morning you wake, you walk, one small step in front of the other, upon the all-forgiving, all-embracing earth, until you reach your destination for the day. In between, you're fed and watered like a beloved flower in Mother Camino's garden. You wake, you walk. You are called to be where your feet are. Sometimes I sang Landslide by Fleetwood Mac as honey-eyed cows with bells around their necks made music of their own. Often I laughed and sometimes I sobbed up stone-laden hills or trudged across unlovely industrial estates chasing scant pockets of shade. But I was always called to be where my feet are and not wish myself elsewhere. It wasn't ever easy for someone used to floating away when the going gets hard. But Mother Camino holds your hand. It's all right here, she says. You've got this. Keep going. And so you learn to trust yourself and this earthly journey. For those of us born with a bent towards mystery, with a capital M, the sensitive ones, the empaths, the light workers, the quiet ones, be where your feet are is a powerful illumination. Number four. Walk your way. Don't wish you are walking differently. That's what I learned. Your way is the right way. Mother Camino will catch you if you fall, but she believes you can do this. For more than a thousand years, pilgrims have been praying with their feet along this route, whatever that looked like. So you can too, she reminds us. As one whose soul arcs towards wonder, I've tended to be uncomfortable with activities on this earthly realm that have little or nothing to do with said wonder. (laughs) I have measured myself harshly against others and found myself lacking. I set out on the Camino with my beautiful friend Sarah. It very quickly became apparent that we walked at different paces. Sarah was faster and a lot of people were. A lot of people overtook me on the Camino, no matter how hard I tried to catch up. The first thing this exposed was my fear of walking alone. And why was that? Because I didn't trust that I could get myself to where we had to be every afternoon mainly because I'd told myself the story for a long time that I have a dreadful sense of direction. But what do you know? I ended up walking across the breadth of Spain and I did it on my own. 
credit here to the kind Camino angels who painted all those blessed yellow arrows showing the way. It was the right thing to do for me and Sarah to walk separately. That quickly emerged because I had to learn, thank you Mother Camino, that I had to walk my way and that my way is okay. That bears repeating, your way is okay, your way is right for you. In life, we each have a path and a way to walk it that will look different to your friends, your relatives or your colleagues and that's perfectly fine. Accept yourself in the way you walk, cooed Mother Camino, which for me brought the tear prickles to my eyes because something else that was exposed throughout my walk across Spain was how unkindly I sometimes speak to myself. Mother Camino wasn't having it. So, fellow pilgrims, walk your way. Slow, fast, shuffle, however you do it. Just love it and know it's right for you. Number three, don't go backwards. This was non-negotiable on my Camino. I simply could not go backwards on the path. It became dramatically apparent on the walk out of Leon on day 20. Ahead of me by a couple of k's, Sarah got lost and I too overshot our accommodation. At first I thought going backwards was the solution to turn around. But even as I suggested to Sarah that we do that, my insides were screaming, no, that's not the right solution. I ignored my insides and began the trek back with immense resistance. But I ploughed on, passing pilgrims who looked at me quizzically because it's so rare to see a pilgrim coming towards you as you walk. Eventually I gave up, rang Sarah and said I was joining her at the new place she'd booked. The outcome of all of this is that our lodgings for that night in Hospital del Ruigo turned out to be one of the most delightful places we stayed on the Camino. Shout out to Hostel Don Suero de Quiñones. We loved being there. <laughs> Traversing the village, there was a long medieval bridge with a fabulous legend attached to it about a knight who took on 300 opponents on this bridge to prove his love for a woman. After some recovery time, I strolled across this long bridge and stumbled upon a group of locals singing and dancing together as part of a liturgical celebration. They were out in the street. It was so lovely to see, preschoolers to grandmothers. Their joy and sense of community was palpable. I smiled as I realised that there are unexpected joys to encounter when we don't go backwards on the path. This day helped me release a tendency I'd long struggled with to ruminate over the past, literally going over and over old ground until, like a rat trapped in a maze, I'd collapse in exhaustion seeing no way out. With stark clarity, the Camino showed me the futility of going backwards and how, when we decide to go forward, Something much better than we thought possible will welcome us. Cross the bridge to a new way of thinking, Mother Camino whispered, and you may meet the surprise of chivalry and voices raised as one in song. Number two illumination is lighten your load. Lay down your heavy pack, pilgrim, Mother Camino instructs. She won't wag her finger, but if you're carrying too much in your backpack, metaphorically or literally, you will know quick smart. In terms of physical baggage, that realisation came on the eve of starting the Camino as we surveyed our kit and made the snap decision to ship half of it to Santiago. Yet, my illuminations are more concerned with figurative baggage, the thoughts that weigh us down. These can come in the form of ruminations, as I've talked about, tired patterns, hurts, traumas, habits, stories, old shame and ways of being that we carry around that no longer serve. Perhaps they never did serve. Perhaps some of these things we're carrying don't even belong to us and never have. My experience was that on some of the most physically taxing days, it was as if I had the proverbial devil on one shoulder wanting me to voice all of the reasons why I couldn't and shouldn't be doing this walk. But it didn't stop there. I kind of wanted to lash out as old hurts surfaced and I used my discomfort on the Camino to find new ways to blame myself and others for the way things had turned out. Here's what I learned along the way. The Camino shines a giant floodlight on your inner life. Have you buried an old hurt down so low you think you'll never see it again? Mother Camino will light up that corner and you'll have no choice but to look squarely at it. The way makes it hard to turn away, which is as it should be, for examining a wound in the bright light of day may be the first step to healing. It's alarming what we shoulder without realising. Without the gift of the Camino and its angels, I might never have realised the heft of the negative self-talk I lugged around 
or the deep ancestral wounds that I'd inherited. All was revealed to me in the clean light of a Spanish summer, and in the revealing, the way forward seemed so much simpler. Accept and allow before you can clear out. It reminded me of Rumi's poem, The Guest House. Do you know it? It goes, This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, he says. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Each sorrow, says Rumi, can be a portal to something new. Treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. My Camino spotlit my inner life. I accepted what I saw and could then release. There was so much I didn't or couldn't see before the Camino. As I walked, I lightened my load to journey more comfortably through life and to make room in my backpack for treasures I gathered along the way. New insights, new friends, ideas, and a fresh, more loving way to treat myself. Ultimately, when you lighten your load, what's illumined is a new way forward that raises you, the corners of your eyes and lips, your mood, your pace, instead of dragging you down. Thank you for coming this far on our walk together, which has brought us finally to my number one illumination. Trust the path. In my 2014 book, Love Never Dies, I wrote, The path winds and I follow, likening my meandering path homeward on my daily walk to the way my childhood fascination with spooky stories led ultimately to the understanding that the riddle of a ghost is an expression of the indestructibility of love. It was an understanding I was destined to reach in order for my life's work to evolve, but my arrival wasn't guaranteed. To get there, I had to trust the path, to follow its winding ways and not stop, turn around or park myself at any juncture. There was hard work involved, challenges and no shortcuts. It was the same on the Camino, where yellow arrows pointed the way. Sarah says we all have an inbuilt system of yellow arrows. It's called our intuition. On my walk, I learned that when we put our egos to the side and trust the path, life will take us to where we're meant to be. Every afternoon on the Camino, I arrived at our lodgings, ready to debrief with Sarah and share a meal together. In my walk of life, I trusted the path that led me via a career in journalism, to my books, from Spirit Sisters to Where Spirits Dwell and Love Never Dies and eventually to this podcast. I got here on the wings of stories, hundreds of stories, stories I was so honoured to be entrusted with. This year, Mother Camino walked me to my story at last. On my pilgrimage across Spain, I knew every step was bringing me closer to my great-grandmother Manuela's story. You see, my journey ended where hers began, in greenest Galicia, where I left a piece of my heart to keep company the piece she left behind when she crossed the Atlantic in 1911 to make a new life in Uruguay, where she laid roots and seeded the family tree I make my nest in today, in the forests of Galicia, embraced by chestnuts, beech and pines, I encountered a long-lost love, because the Camino always gives you a love story. The love story was my story, the one I'd forgotten to tell throughout my many years of lovingly and respectfully documenting others' experiences. Years ago, I awoke one morning with the phrase, there is something that's been forgotten on repeat in my head, in my heart. Now, thanks to Mother Camino and my reencuentro, my rediscovery of Galicia, for this is an ancient love, I've remembered what I'd forgotten. That thing forgotten? It was me. Now I'm trusting where my path has led to writing my first novel, historical fiction inspired by true events, by my family story, my origin story. And this project has lit me up inside. While I write my novel, I aim to keep the Spirit Sisters podcast going in this new direction. I'll see you soon for more. In the meantime, thank you for walking with me. I'm grateful for your companionship. Buen camino. Thank you for listening to Spirit Sisters. If you enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe so that you won't miss an episode. And don't forget to rate and review the show. Have an experience you'd like to share with me? Get in touch at my website, karinamachado.com 
or find me on Facebook at Karina Machado Author. After all, there's nothing more powerful than a story.